So the amount of math involved in electrical engineering is quite a lot. It's actually terrifying. But once you understand what math is involved in each class and why it's there and how you can go about it, it's actually not that bad. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the math that I used in four years of electrical engineering in my bachelor's degree. And I'm going to walk you class by class and show you what that math actually looks like. Now I'm doing this mainly for my four year bachelor degree. Um, I'll do a separate video for my master's and PhD and the math I use in my internship. So stick around for that. In my first year, the three math intensive classes were calculus, chemistry, and introduction to computer science. And introduction to computer science was not bad at all. There was almost no math involved. It was just basically learning some code. And chemistry, the math that was used is very simple, just basic linear math to like solve for equations like PV equals NRT, and you would like basically try to solve for one variable. And it's just very basic algebra, very simple math. In calculus one, however, because this was calculus for engineers, it was a bit more intense. Mainly in this class, you start learning how to take derivatives. And for most people, it's not too bad. But in my case, I had the head of the mathematics department as my professor. So unfortunately, we had to do a lot of math probes and a lot of extra work that we didn't really need to. And this is what some of these proofs look like. Now in the spring, however, we take calculus two, which now we start dealing with integrals and integration. And we also learn about series and summations. And this again, not too bad. And it would actually be useful later on in some of the physics classes. In my case, I took physics one mechanics, which essentially just involved basic motion and forces. And for example, like gravitational equation. So in mechanics, actually the math was not too bad. It was pretty straightforward. We would try to solve problems like this, where again, you would like have some type of force action going on and you would try like isolate for one force and solve for it. So again, nothing too bad. In my second year, I took differential equations and this is very relevant because at the same time, the class that I was taking is circuit analysis, where you learn about how to solve electrical circuits. So basically like resistors, capacitors, inductors. And if you're just doing like voltage current resistance, which is essentially like the first half of the class, these equations are linear and they're pretty easy. You change one variable and that other variable changes at the same rate. However, later on in the class, when you start learning about capacitors and inductors and you start learning about like charging circuits, um, that's where the differential equations that I learned in my math class become more relevant because now the behavior is no longer linear on both ends. For for example, if there's a capacitor in your circuit and you turn the switch and apply voltage and pass current through your circuit, that change in voltage and current is not going to happen at the same rate as that charging of the capacitor. There's going to be some time delay and this can be modeled with differential equations. So again, nothing too bad as long as you understand the concepts and you'd probably have to do a ton of problem sets just to make sure you understand the concepts really well. Now that semester, there's also another class, digital principles, which deals with binary numbers, ones and zeros. So in this case, you do a different type of math where you start breaking decimal numbers into binary so you go from base 10 to base 2 and you start doing all sorts of mathematical operations with base 2 numbers. So you start adding two binary numbers together. And that class is actually very interesting and the math uses very interesting because again, it's just like basic addition, subtraction, things like that. But now you're doing it with binary numbers, which is kind of new. Now in this semester also, there's physics 2, which is electromagnetics. So you start learning about electric fields, magnetic fields, and you start learning about the equations that model electric fields, model magnetic fields. For example, you start learning about Coulomb's law and the forces created by charge charges. And then later on in the course, you learn about, for example, electromagnetic induction and the idea how like a changing magnetic field induces an electric field and exactly how much and basically the energy carried out within the field. So the math in electromagnetics is going to be very dependent on calculus too, because you're going to be doing a lot of like surface integrals and basically trying to sum up how much energy is within like a field at a, a closed boundary. So again, nothing too bad, assuming that you did well in Calc 2 and uh, they like fields. Now there is also a bit of vector calculus in this class. However, you learn more about that in Calc 3, which is in the next semester. So in the second semester of your second year, generally there's many math intensive classes. And keep in mind, this will vary on universities. This is based on what the university I went to. And in this semester, there were four math intensive classes. It was physics three, which dealt with waves and optics. There was calculus three, which dealt with multivariable calculus. Essentially, it's taking calc one and uh, making it 3D. There's a class called engineering computations, which teaches you like a bit of linear algebra as well as MATLAB. And MATLAB is extremely important to learn if you're an electrical engineer. And then there's also signals and systems. And this class has very interesting math because you start learning about frequency domain math. And it's no, no longer becomes a matter of linear versus nonlinear. You start dealing with other types of math, which is imaginary and complex numbers. You start learning about convolution and you start learning about the Fourier transform, which looks like this. And this is a class where a lot of people struggle because the math just becomes really weird because complex and imaginary numbers are not really intuitive. The concept of the frequency domain is not very intuitive. So things get pretty ugly in there, but it's 
pretty interesting stuff. So usually that class is a weed out. If you can make it through signals and systems, that means you should be okay for the rest of the degree. Now in those first two years, the math is extremely intensive because you're essentially trying to build a good foundation and how to do basic math. And when I say basic math, I don't mean algebra or like uh, addition subtraction. I mean like basically being able to calculate rates of change and being able to integrate and being able to solve differential equations and being comfortable with complex and imaginary numbers and being comfortable with binary numbers. That's basic math for electrical engineers. So then in your third year, you start taking more of the application oriented classes and you start applying a lot of this math. For example, in electronic circuits class, which is usually like a follow up of circuit analysis, but with the introduction in, in that you deal with like some linear and nonlinear devices, you start dealing with amplifiers, start dealing with diodes and other components that have behavior that is more complicated than just basic resistors, capacitors, inductors. You also learn about transistors and their modes of operation, which has some mathematics involved. And this semester you also take applied electromagnetics, which is is basically electromagnetic physics on steroids applied to electrical engineering. Uh, you start learning a lot more about waveguides and transmission lines. You start learning about Smith charts. So that's actually its own math branch where again, you're spending some time in the phasor domain and you're trying to understand how the phase of a signal relates to its amplitude. Now you can design circuits in such way that you can track that phase. And if you have no idea what this means, don't worry, you'll learn it in time. But in this class, again, you don't learn any like new math. You just use what you already knew from your previous classes to get a better understanding of electromagnetics in the context of electrical engineering, for example, in terms of like designing antennas or waveguides. And then there's probability and statistics class, which is very math intensive. Start learning about basic probability events, expectation, mean, standard deviation, variance, and all these basic concepts you'd expect in a probability class, but then you'd also start applying it to electrical engineering scenarios. For example, modeling noise in a communication system. And then finally, in the spring, you do take a communication systems class in which you model that noise, but as well as doing some other things like modulation theorem and applying some of the concepts from signals and systems to learn how communication systems operate. And actually this class is quite nice because you get to learn things on a system level. So you get some block diagrams that explain to you what goes on. But then inside those block diagrams, you get to use some math that is similar to the systems and signals math, which again, like frequency domain stuff, time domain, frequency domain multiplication. Because essentially like in modulation theorem, all you're doing is you're just multiplying the two signals together and you're seeing, and you're equipping the message signal onto the carrier signal. And again, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, you'll learn it in time. But essentially the math that you're gonna be using is actually a lot simpler than in the previous classes. It's just gonna be the foundation that you learn in signals and systems. There's also fundamentals of energy systems or power systems. And I think the math in that class is pretty straightforward because you're essentially dealing with just like efficiently transferring energy from point A to point B. And you're dealing with pretty large numbers. So I'd actually say the math in there is pretty easy. It looks something like this. And then finally, there's embedded systems, which you're essentially dealing with microcontrollers and you're kind of dealing more with computer engineering concepts. So in that class, there was not really much like calculations or derivations or anything like that. It was pretty much just like learning how to program a microcontroller, what is a microcontroller and what applications you could use it for. So that's more like a project oriented class. And then finally, in your senior year, besides the electives that you can take, which will involve different math, but you also take HDL or hardware descriptive language or essentially digital design classes. And again, those are just piggybacking the concepts you learned in digital principles and being able to like hard code them like through your computer. So not much new math to learn there. So really the hardest math you learn is in like your first and second year. And a lot of it is just built on like a calculus and differential equations foundation. So if you do really well in your calculus and differential equations classes and linear algebra, uh, you should be good to go in terms of knowing how to do the math in all the other classes. And actually the math in the later classes would make more sense and actually be more fun because you know how to do the math, but you get to actually apply it to things that are interesting. Now, if you're curious about these classes in terms of how difficult they are, um, I did make a video ranking which ones I thought was were the easiest and which ones I thought were the hardest. And you can check it out over here.